Many of us remember Tatum, the, the gatherings and being made to sing and play along with Grandma. I, I love that that was a song that Grandma requested, God will take care of you. It communicates to us an unwavering faith that through all the difficulties of life, God will take care of you. Grandma certainly had difficulties in life, and I don't need to share all the details. In fact, I'm assured that if you spend any time with Grandma, she probably shared some of them with you. Um, you know, I enjoyed the last years with Grandma, especially as I took on more of a role as a, as a pastor. This gave Grandma and I um, endless things to talk about. And I found that I'd stepped into one of her favorite um, categories of conversation. Grandma loved her Bible, and Grandma loved to argue. And, um, and I got, for some people, this is a fault, um, arguing, but with me, the arguing communicated some very good and true things about Grandma. And these are qualities about a person that can only come out when you really get into a good, substantial, healthy discussion. Um, and I want to share three of them just this morning. Three qualities that I think Grandma exhibited were honesty, passion, and courage. Honesty. Um, here is a quality that Grandma exhibited in both good and and the bad. There are times where your brutal honesty does not always serve others well, but we, we lack so much. This is a quality that we are desperately in need of. It's far more common to sit down with people who will work hard to just avoid their honest feelings and seek only to say what they think you want them to hear. I experienced this a lot in my conversations. And Grandma was never one to not just tell you how she felt. And she did not suffer from this impulse to not just share who she was and what her thoughts were. We would sit down to discuss various topics. And Grandma almost felt like it was a disservice to herself and to those she spoke with if she didn't just tell you the truth. It was almost as if a conversation wasn't worth having if you didn't just say what you thought. What a respectable quality this is in our world today to just say what you are thinking, to say who you are and what's going on. Grandma certainly exhibited honesty, passion. There was always a persistent passion to Grandma's conversations. She wasn't easy to convince of a position other than the one she already had. We'd sit down and have a conversation on a certain Bible passage and we'd go around and around, I'd make my points, and she'd come back and give me her counterpoint again. And she was very passionately held to the things that she believed in. Now, this too can be a frustrating quality, but you're trying to make a point, and the other person just won't give up the fight. And then you work hard to prove your point again, and, and, and this, this quality of passion can be, can be overdone. But to remove that altogether from a person is to, is to talk to jellyfish who don't stand for anything. And Grandma stood for things. She, has, she was passionate. And the convictions that she held, she held to them passionately. I'm thankful. I'm thankful the times we'd sit down. And she would not just take everything I said with some big gulp. But she passionately held to her position and made me work <laughs> to prove where I thought she was wrong and where she thought she was right. Grandma had honesty. Grandma had passion. Grandma had courage. She always downplayed her desire for the limelight, kind of pretended like she didn't want to be out in front with the attention on her. But we all know she really, when a time came for who's going to stand up and say something, it would be grandma. Who's going to lead the song? No, nah, grandma would deny it, and then she'd be the one to step up and to, to get the courage up to say something. You may not know this if you aren't in our family, but every year for Christmas, for as long as I can remember, we would gather around, and Grandma would make us do things. Um, part of the fact, the reason why we did a con congregational reading this morning was that it was an homage, was an honor of Grandma. I wanted you all to do something. I wanted to make you do something, because if we were here, Grandma would want you to be involved in what we are doing. And we're going to sing a hymn in a little bit in honor of Grandma, who would want you all to get involved. This is what she did. And the thing about it is, every year... Um, 
We were not always the most gracious family uh, when Grandma would ask us to do stuff. Every year, she would make us either sing the 12 days of Christmas, answer a random trivia questions regarding Christmas, and listen to my brother reading the uh, Christmas story. And every year, we'd try to change it. It seemed like to have someone else to read it. And she was not going to have it. Eric was going to read the story. And you'd think, after doing this year after year, you just decide to quit. And Grandma would show up every Christmas... And she'd face all of our banter and ridicule and make us do it again. We'd make fun of it. We'd goof off and laugh at each other. And every year, Grandma would come back with a new program to make us all do. It became one of my favorite events of the year. And I will definitely miss hearing Uncle John, hearing her tell Uncle John and Uncle Malcolm what to do, hearing them mock her about it, and then giving in and doing what she'd asked them to do. These are the things I'll remember about Grandma. I mean, just, you know, a snapshot of the multitudes of time. Grandma was so confident. Um, it says in her obituary, I'll read it here. She was a self-taught piano player, and I, I dabble in music as well. And I remember going over and taking my guitar because uh, the kids had learned some songs, and we wanted them to sing her for Grandma, and they, of course, refused to do it. But we had the piano out, and Grandma wanted us to do some songs. And so she'd just say, well, play, and she'd name the song. And I'd... Well, do you have the chords? Uh, No, you know how to do it. Just play, just start playing and do it. And I had had no idea. That was how Grandma, she had this confidence and she could do it. She could just pick the song up and play. Grandma exhibited honesty, passion, courage, confidence. And these are the things I will remember and encourage you to remember about Grandma, about Peggy Scarda, and seek to employ the best parts of these qualities in her memory. Grandma's obituary is unique. She wrote it herself, and it's in the first person, but I will read it as well in in first person. I was born Margaret Peggy Louise Moore on May 14, 1928, in a house by the side of the road in Cromwell, Iowa. I lived there a short time with my parents, Griffith and Edith Moore, Three brothers, Dwight Eugene, Hollis Griffith, Alfred Lauren, and one sister, Doris Leah. We moved shortly to Prescott, Iowa, where my dad worked on the railroad. And here I gained another brother, James Gilbert. We, as a family, survived the bad depression that followed. And dad finally got a job working on a farm south of Maxburg. How I enjoyed the country life, doing chores, etc., and attending country school. I was nine years old at the time. When high school days came, I attended Arisby High School for one year when we moved to Tingley to another farm job for Dad. High school was okay, but what I enjoyed most were the basketball games we played. I spent my time waiting for Tuesdays and Friday nights looking forward to game time. I hope they play basketball in heaven. That might have been some of our topics of conversation. High school was good to me as I met Albert Ray Scarda when he enrolled as a freshman. We became good friends, and by the end of school days, we decided we always wanted to be together. So we were married on February 14, 1950 in Tingley, and decided to become farmers. I had gone to summer school and had a teaching job, but decided one year was enough for me. We lived eight years south of Creston on a farm where our four children were born, Rebecca Ray, Janet Colleen, Jenny Louise, and John Allen. We then had a chance to rent a farm near to Tingley and where Elbert could help his dad and brother, Harry, farm. Those were good days, raising a garden, canning, helping in the fields if needed, horseback riding, being a mom and dad, picnics, and keeping up with school activities. Before we hardly knew it, the kids had disappeared, and we were just the two of us again. I went back to nursing school and worked as an LPN at Clearview Home until retirement age. After selling our farm, we retired and moved into Tingley, where we spent many happy hours together, growing a garden, lots of flowers in our yard, fishing, and taking long drives in the evening. We also formed a small band, The Echoes, with me on the keyboard. We entertained for several years in area towns, playing favorite songs and singing. I always loved music and played the organ for church for several years when needed. I was self-taught, so I didn't have to put up with those time-consuming lessons. (laughs) 
We lost our beautiful daughter, Becky, very suddenly in 2001 due to a brain aneurysm. With God's help, we got through this bad time, and we will see her again someday. Time has gone too fast. Our home was always filled with love, and I leave behind the best family anyone could ever hope for. My children, Janet and Tom Hall of Henderson, Nevada, Jenny and Malcolm Amy of Mount Air, and John and Debbie Scarta of Pleasant Hill. My grandchildren, Eric and Don Dolacek of Mount Air, Josie and Al Johnson of Des Moines, Darren and Darla Dolacek of Mount Air, Heidi and Brian Sintagata of Trabuco Canyon, California, Allison Hall and her fiancé Jesse, and Shane Hall of Henderson, Nevada, Melissa and Eric Friedrich of Mount Air, Dustin and Rebecca Amy of Urbandale, and Chelsea and Axel Hawk of Newton. My great-grandchildren, Caitlin and Becca Dolacek, Becky and Colby Johnson, Joel and Jana Dolacek, J.C., Luke, Robin, Amanda, and Amy Sintagata, Tatum, Alba, and Morgan Friedrich, Talon, and Tegan Amy, and Waylon Hawk. My step-great-grandchildren, Jasper and Georgia Ray, Lucas and Zoe Klemmer, also son-in-law, Cecil, wife, Patty Dolacek, sister-in-law, Mame Kohan, and Jesse Moore, many nieces and nephews. Preceded in death by husband, Albert, daughter, Rebecca, parents, Griffith and Edith Moore, parents-in-law, Joe and Josie Scarda, siblings, Dwight and Fern, Hollis and Maxine, Alfred, James and Marilyn, Doris and Roy Schofield, brothers-in-law, Harry and Jean Scarda, Dick and Merle Scarda, and Don, Don Coran, sister-in-law, Anna and Leo Linky.